and I would select print, view all presets and choose A3 and the orientation needs to be landscape. I would also just check this resolution here, um, make it centimeters and millimeters, just so that you, could, you don't have to use inches. Centimeters is probably fine. Let's create that. So remember, A3, landscape. If you've got your rulers showing, all you need to do is drag down from the top or from the side and set up your grid lines. Okay. Um, collect all of your images from the internet wherever you like. Um, I often search for vectors because that way they're nice and clear. Don't just grab it from the thumbnails. Make sure that you click on the images and get the biggest version that you can, else you'll get really pixelated images. So this one, I actually took a screenshot. I blew it up as big as I could on my computer screen and screenshotted it so I could get um, the best image. So this is my peach. So what I want is just the black. And then if I select just the black, I can change the peach color to anything that I want. I like to use um, color select when I've got a really high contrast image. So I'll just go select, color range, click on the black. And what you'll see is a little picture up here. If I clicked on anything else, I'll start to see these grays coming in. Click on the black, okay, and then you can see all of the black pixels have been selected. If I copy that, go back to my new document and paste it, then all I've got now is that black. If I want to change the color of that shape, I'll, I can do the same thing, select Color range, color pick it, okay. And then choose my color. Oops, where are my colors? Oh my gosh, it keeps coming up on my other screen. Let's make that a peachy pink color, okay. <clears throat> and then I use edit, fill, and again, over here, foreground color. You can also choose background color, etc. And there you go. I've got a pink peach. That is then something that I can move around. That's not a very good example because I didn't get all of that black. So um, <laughs> make sure that you don't get those black edges. Let's put something else in there. Okay, New Zealand. So I turned that into a blue New Zealand. That's my umbrella. Where is some of my... Here we go. So I'm just gonna copy that and pop that into my picture. If you want to really easily transform it, I use command or uh, a shortcut there, transform, and you can do all sorts of things with it. And that is image adjustment, um, image adjustment, no, image edit. Where is it? Free transform, there we go. Do anything you like with that. So when you want to do something like color picking, you go over to the colors over on the left, select the color, and once you have this little eyedropper, you pick that color and it should find it for you. Okay, so we'll go back to New Zealand. Where's my New Zealand? Here we go. I'm going to use the same method here. Select color range. Choose the orange part. Okay. 
um, go back to, yeah, control paste. <laughs> I forgot to copy it. Whoops. Copy. There we go. My New Zealand. So when you want to work on a on a um, on an image, make sure that you know which layer you are working on. You can't see my layers. Oh, here we go. So I need to work on this New Zealand, and in Photoshop at the moment. If you just click on your image, it will automatically go to your layer. So there you go. Hopefully that'll work really easily for you. Now I'm gonna just color select this orange, but firstly, I'm gonna identify the area that I want the computer to look at. So just that little bit. Select, color range, pick on that there. Fuzziness, make sure that you get all of that color. So if you go high, it should get all of those um, little funny edges that I missed last time. Okay, there we go. So I've picked all of that. Now I want to change the color. So let's go back to that image blue. And, oops, where am I going? Edit, fill, and then I've got a blue New Zealand. Sorry, Miss, that I um left just the appeared. computer just the computer <laughs> just crashed. Okay, no problem, Josh. So that is how I've changed the colours on all of these different shapes. Adding fonts and creating little boxes, that's not too hard, and then it's just a matter of laying them out. What I did here with that peach is I spray painted in the background. So, oh, that peach is terrible, isn't it? Don't worry about it. What, so choosing, um, making sure that your layers go in different ways. So if I wanted to make sure that that New Zealand was over top of something, I make sure that the layer is higher in the stack than what it's underneath. So if I swap that one over, the peach is now in front. See how that works? So I want something to be behind my peach and I can actually just make a new layer by going to layer, new, layer. And it'll just ask you to name it. New layer, okay. Layer five, I want that to be behind my peach. So I'm just gonna swap that over and I can change my paintbrush so that it's very, very faint to get me a, give me a spray paint effect. There are presets you can explore, but hardness is the one that changes um, the amount of brush, like solid brush that you've got, fuzziness around the edges, if you like. I'm gonna make that really low and make a really big brush. There we go, that's really big. Oh, that's way too big. And also, if you want to do a spray paint effect, you can change the opacity. So if you lower that down, it changes how much of the color comes through. So I'm just going to spray paint in the background there. As you can see, it gives you a different effect and you can play around with that. And that could be instead of color blocking if you want to. The more you add on, the deeper that color will go. Okay, if you're gonna do the grid lines, add in all of your grid lines. So let's just do a little block of color down the bottom here. And select the rectangle selection tool. And if you click pretty close to your grid lines, it will snap to the guide. And then it's just a matter of color picking from the images that you've got in your document. Okay, 
and edit and fill. There you go. If you've got um, colors that you want to pick and they're not already in your document, you need to go to those images first. Oh, the photograph of the ice creams is in there. So for example, this one, I need to color pick that color orange and then go back to my original document. And then you'll see the color is brought through. Okay, so you've got cutting out shapes and recoloring them, which you can do to your mood board. You can color block, adding in blocks of color, and I've shown you how to select those from your inspirational images. And finding images online, that should be pretty simple. You know how to do that. Adding in a font. Okay, there you go. What also, you might, if you haven't already done this, I think that's everybody here. No one else has joined. Inku, were you here right from the start? Hello? Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah I you was. Just, you just left and then came back. Yeah. Um, on your course content, I have actually, um, created a whole lot of zips here or just got a whole lot of really cool fonts that I like from the internet. Um, you can obviously download your fonts, but if you um, want to see quite a few fun ones, they are there for you. Um, so let's just go back to the Photoshop. So once you install those fonts on your computer, they will automatically be in Photoshop when you want to use them. And to make a font, so I've already selected my color orange there. Select the T, the T over here for text. And then you change your font up here. So that's bold to bold. That one's quite fun. And then you can change your color by clicking up here. Changing. You could color pick as well. Let's make that this gray color. And there you go, there's your font. Uh, other things you can do with the font, can't see. Changing it around, warping it. Ooh, okay, arc it, there we go, that's okay. Change the bend a little bit. Whoop. Oops. and then moving it around. 